And Chess.com is here with Grandmaster Karu Nakamura, who played a six-plus hour draw today. But I want to go back to the opening in the Cambridge Springs. You played this move eight, Bishop F4, effectively sacrificing a pawn. Tell us what kind of compensation you got for that pawn. Did you feel it was adequate? I mean, uh, this is an idea I had many, many years ago, actually. Um, I mean, as, uh, as, as, as I told Laurent during the game, I mean, we played this in, in Las Vegas in, I think, 2006 or seven something, you know, many, many years ago. And, I mean, I think I also played this against Gary online as well. But, um, you know, I, th I thought it was an interesting idea. Um, obviously, Seth Roman surprised me with the opening choice, so I just decided to play something. Uh, and I, I thought I had compensation, but probably the, the main, main issue is that black's moves are too easy. Black doesn't have many moves, in fact. And, like, uh, what he did in the game, queen e7, b6, it's, it's almost too obvious because there just, it seems like there are simply are no other moves. And so... Uh, after that, he played quite well. I uh, played rookie c8, which was very accurate, and then it sh should have been a quick draw, but, um, but yeah, he, he kind of started getting adventurous and making his position, uh, making a mess out of it when there was no need for it, so I, I was able to play for quite a bit longer, but I mean, I, I don't think uh, I ever had any real winning chances. Yeah, no one can fault you for trying. There's been a lot of other storylines of the tournament. Yesterday, when your game was over, you were online watching James Tarjan pull off a historic game. What were, what were your thoughts as you saw him beat Kromnik? Uh, well, I mean, I, th I thought it was quite nice. Uh, any, anytime you see someone who uh, was playing uh, many, many years ago, I mean, long before I was born, obviously, but, but someone, you know, who was playing in, in the glory days, I guess you could say, of American chess, at least prior to the last year or so, um, it's just great. And he's a nice person. Obviously, he was on the last uh, Olympiad team that won a gold medal in 76. So um, it was just nice to see. Obviously, for Kramnik, it sucks, but... Um, it's always nice when you see some of the old guys, uh, you know, pull off an upset. Usually it's not against someone like Kramnik, but still, it's was, it was quite nice to see. Yeah, and it's about 8 o'clock here. I know you want to get going, so I'm just going to ask you one more question. This has become, well, by some regards, the strongest open tournament ever, uh, which is good and bad because it's great for, uh, it's for, for chess and for chess.com, and, and for you, you're one of the faces of chess.com. However, it also means it's harder to win. So what were your thoughts when, for example, Magnus Carlsen decided to come at the last minute? Were you happy to get another chance to possibly play him, or were you thinking, man, it's going to be harder to win that 50K? Uh, I mean, I don't, I don't really think about such things, to be honest. Um, I mean, if Magnus is play, Magnus playing, I mean, I guess that means he's the favorite, but I don't think it really de decreases my chances of winning the tournament. Really, it's just a matter of uh, converting or getting lucky in the right, right situations. Um, and, and obviously, with so many strong players, I mean, it's, it's hard to win every game, and uh, it makes it more of a challenge, which I think is a good thing. So certainly, I mean, I'm, I'm not thinking about it from the financial standpoint. That, that's about the furthest thing from, in, you know, uh, in my mind right now. All right, well, good luck in trying to win the title, and uh, there's a lot to play for in the final five rounds. Mm -hmm. Thank you.